Mr. Sidney, I am delighted that you are giving me time to hear a very powerful story that I was privileged to learn about through Mrs. Gross, who's the principal at Tappahannock Elementary School, and also Mrs. Roan, who's the current director of special education for Essex County Schools. Mm -hmm. And I learned that you done a, made a presentation to the school board in March in which you recognized teachers who've made a significant difference in your life, some of them before you identify with a learning disability in fifth grade, others during your entire school experience, and how these teachers really have continued to impact you today. Your story is powerful and amazing. You have been to J. Sargent Reynolds Community College, you transferred to ODU where you got a Bachelor of Science degree, and then from there you've gone to, o to VCU and gotten um, your Master's of Social Work degree. So you've really accomplished and achieved amazing things in your educational career. And I'm sure that you've done that through the championing process. You recognized in that presentation one teacher, Mrs. Toby, who was your sixth and seventh grade resource teacher when you were receiving services as a student with a learning disability. Mm -hmm. And I'm really kind of curious, you chose her as a champion, so I'd love to hear more about what was it about her that made her a champion? What did she do that supported you, for example? And how did you feel when you were, when you were with her? Well, I think what made Miss Toby a champion was that it was a rough time for me. I was in special education. I didn't want any of my friends or anyone at school knowing I was in special education because I didn't want to get teased or made fun of for being there. So it was a very, it was a rough transition in that regard. But when I got to Miss Toby's class and I got to really know her, even though it was special education, she made me feel like I was no different than everyone else. She made me feel normal, made me feel regular. She accepted me. It wasn't about, you know, the, the deficits. It was about the strengths and how she could help me improve on some of the things that other teachers were saying that I needed to improve on. And she did it in such a positive, reassuring, nurturing way that even though I didn't want to be seen in her class and I used to kind of, you know, duck and hide to get in there, you know, once I got in there, I really felt warm and I really felt welcome and I really felt like she recognized something in me that I knew I had about myself, but I don't doesn't think it was being expressed or other teachers had seen that. So she was able to kind of reach me in that in that way, um, and it really encouraged me and motivated me to improve upon you know the skills that I've already had. So there was something special about her. She was encouraging. She was positive, and she tapped into strengths that you that you had that maybe had been dormant for some time. In that presentation, I think you alluded to her in our conversations, the ways in which she provided you with opportunities or possibilities that helped you reconnect with those talents and those skills. Can you think about what it was that she did that did help you reconnect mm -hmm. with those talents and skills? I think one of the main things during that period of time um, was the organizational piece. She encouraged me to keep a um, folder where I had to write down the different uh, homework assignments that I had from each each class and then get my parents to sign it to make sure that I was completing the homework and just to organize myself because um, I did have some attention deficit impulsivity so I wasn't the most organized person so I think one thing she recognized that you know you can do the work but you just need to make sure that you're organized because um, when you're organized, you know what you've done, you know what you need to do, mm. and that'll make your life less complicated. Mm -hmm. So she was very practical in her approach. It wasn't really focused on a lot of the negative. It was more focused on, you know, these are some areas of growth for you instead of these are areas or impediments or, you know, you have this learning disability, this insurmountable disability that you can't conquer. It was like, no, you can conquer this. You can do this. Just take these steps to do it. Mm. So she kind of gave you a path, yeah. you know, on, on how, to, how to work around those areas that were kind of more impediments, as you said, but in order to better express those talents and those skills for yourself. How did that change the beliefs that you had about yourself at that time? 
because you know, it was a hard period at that time. You know, yeah. you weren't particularly happy about the fact that you were identified with um, a label of special ed. How did that provide some change in your own thinking about you? Um, well, one thing was that I didn't want to be in the class, and I felt like I could perform at a level where I wouldn't need the class. So I think she reassured that, too. She made me feel like, Ronnie, you don't belong here. You know, you, this, this class is not something that you need to be in. And she made me feel that she, she kind of spoke to that person that was kind of quieted after just years of just teachers really not having a lot of positives to say. But she was able to tap into that and kind of speak to, like, my inner my inner, my inner self and mm -hmm. kind of gave that some reassurance. And, and was a, I was able to build upon that. But she just, she kind of gave me individual attention because it was five or six of us in a room and we all had different ability, levels of ability. Mm -hmm. But she individualized her attention. So it was almost like she was building a relationship independent of everyone. Everyone had their own relationship with it. It wasn't mm -hmm. like a blanket. Everyone in the class gets the same amount of attention. Everyone in the class gets the same attention. Mm -hmm. It was more so individualized attention. So it was almost like, almost like an appreciation and it was almost as if she recognized you as a person, not as your disability or not as your deficits. Exactly, yeah. So every kid in that class was special. Yeah. And everyone learned in unique ways, and it sounds like she really knew mm -hmm. what those ways were mm -hmm. and supported kids in becoming more aware of, all right, you're really good at this over mm -hmm. here. Let's look at the ways in which if you were to improve these particular skills, so in mm -hmm. your case it was organizational skills, this would actually allow you to better express mm -hmm. yourself and, the no and what you already know and what you've learned mm -hmm. in a more effective way and in a possibly efficient way, especially Definitely. when it comes to organizational skills. Definitely. So she's one of your champions, mm -hmm. right? But I'm sure you have more. Can you think of other people who've been champions for you who are still there, maybe not directly, but mm -hmm. influence you in terms of those beliefs that you have about yourself and the ambitions that you have for what you want to do in your current life? Mm -hmm. um, I think one champion was Miss um, Rexy. She was my science teacher because uh, it was a really big thing in, in middle school because NBC News had came down to Tappahannock to our middle school and they had installed a thermostat so they can know the weather for Tappahannock. And um, she had chosen five students to go to be on TV. That was like huge, six grade up in the news. And in Essex County. In Essex County, so she had, she'd also included me. So I was like, really, you like <laughs> me that much that you included me to be on TV? So I was really excited about yeah. that. But yeah. once I got to high school, who I really had teachers, who are really able to see, two in particular ones were Lillian Smith and Princess Dockery. And they were my, um, I guess, kind of like a home ec class. It was more of a, um, the group was called Family Career Community Leaders of America. Mm. But they ran the organization and they were able to work with me. And they see some things in me, some leadership skills. And they encouraged me to run for president. And I was elected president. And we used to have competitions and conferences in Virginia Beach that we go to. And they encouraged me to participate in that. They encouraged me to compete on the state level. So they seen opportunities for me, and they were able to put me in positions where I could learn and grow, but also be supported at the same time. Um, and they really just, really just encouraged me um, and really held me accountable. And you know, if you're in this leadership position, then you need to behave a certain way. You need to lead a certain way. Because you have people who look up to you, and you're rep not only representing yourself, but you're representing the school, mm -hmm. um, you're representing your family. Um, and I think my family was huge because my family built the relationships with Miss Miss Toby, um, with Miss Doctor and Miss Smith. Uh, my dad, he was pretty popular in the community, so even now when he sees Miss Toby, he'll say, you know, Miss Toby, I see Miss Toby, she asks about you, or I see Miss Smith, she asks about you. So I always make sure if I'm back in the area. Or if I'm at the school, I seek out these teachers. Some have since retired, but Miss Toby, if I could come around, I would always just see if I can go to the school and speak with her. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a light, and like I'm the moth. It's like <laughs> once you get, you know, that feeling from that light, that that warmth and that you know that love and that nurturance, 
then you just attract it back to it even after you, you know you graduated from school wow i love that image yeah so she's really such a light that continues to draw you in and also mm -hmm. your family definitely and as just sort of a, a kind of a natural network of appreciation mm -hmm. and she continues to take an interest in you to such an extent that you sent her a commencement invitation mm -hmm. and then she wrote you a note back um, my guess is that really meant a lot to her for you to remember mm -hmm. her as one of those pivotal people that was instrumental when you look back mm -hmm. at being helping you get where you got yeah. you know yeah definitely she was I mean she was extremely instrumental um, and I think it was because it was at that time in my life where I could have made I could have went either way or the other it was just one of those times where I could have just quit and gave up on myself lost complete interest in school misbehaved and just gave up or the time for me to really buckle down and realize what opportunities I have and to improve and it was it was like and I wouldn't even expect a teacher to play that role but it's almost like it was almost destined that I would get to her have her as a teacher to help me through that period of time mm -hmm. because now thinking back if I didn't have her you know would I have graduated high school would I have went to college would I have had that desire to work on my master's so you know I really felt like she came in my life in a time where I really needed her um, and I wanted to recognize her and I wanted her to be a part of my graduation I wanted her to be there if she could but if not just know that hey your kind words that relationship that we built was a part of me getting this far and you know that I didn't forget about you and that you know I, I appreciate you yeah so what was it about you you talk about that metaphor of the light and the moth and but there's something about you I'm sure that invites teachers to see that promise to see those possibilities and those in those talents so if you were to give kids mm -hmm. some advice on how to take advantage of those opportunities so you saw that Miss Toby was kind of there at that at that time that was a really critical time for you. Mm -hmm. You were not happy about your life changing in the way it did. Mm -hmm. You had close friends and being um, in a resource class moved you out of traveling with friends mm -hmm. through your ordinary classes that you would have been with them mm -hmm. through. And yet there was this opportunity that she presented to you. But there's something about you. What is it about you that you think if you were to say to other kids, look inside yourself and see what it is that you can bring forward mm -hmm. to those opportunities that the champions in your world are offering to you. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? What is it about you? What would you invite them to do? Um, to I, I would definitely, I would invite them to kind of unleash that gifted, that bright, that intelligent, that knowledgeable person inside and not be afraid. Um, I think I had that person the whole time. I was sheltering it because I didn't want that person to get hurt. I didn't want that person to get labeled. I didn't want that person to, to go out there and make a mistake and you know feel like they failed. So I kind of kept that person aside. Um, so what they did is they seen that person and they gave me the courage and the support to let that person you know shine and to, and to bring them out. So you know I just would, I would let them know you know just to be resilient. You know, there's going to be times where people are going to say things. They're going to label you. You're not going to feel like you're going to meet the you know challenges that are ahead. But just to be resilient and work through it and understand that there are people at the school, your parents, that you can go to for support. Because there was one time where I really felt alone and by myself. And I didn't have enough courage to talk to someone about how I felt. So I kind of internalized it and just dealt with it. And I don't think that's the healthy way to go. Um, just know that you do have people out there to talk to, to people that have experienced it, um, and just to have a network of people to go to for support. And just know that you're not alone, and you know that you do have people that that can help you.